All right, so why, why we need document system? So at a minimum, accountants must be able to read documentation and understand how a system works, okay? It's the minimum requirement, especially for auditors to assess the risk. And this is because the uh, Sovereign's Oxley Act, it requires right, management to assess internal controls and also requires auditors to evaluate the assessment. That's why documentation uh, of systems becomes more and more important. And also it is used uh, uh, for system development and changes. All right. So first let's talk about flowcharts. So flowcharts is an analytical technique that uses a standard set of symbols to describe pictorically some aspect of the information system in a clear, concise, and logical manner. Okay, so flowchart is a historical. Use graphs to show how system works. So particularly, we're going to show business processes how business processes are performed, and also how documents flow through the organization. So the key strengths of flowcharts are that they can easily capture control via decision points. Okay, you can show menu versus automated processes. So these are the key strengths of flowcharts. There are several types of flowcharts. We have system flowcharts, which provides a big picture overview of the information systems. It describes data flow and procedures within the accounting information system. We also have program flowcharts, which shows the logic associated with a computer program. Also, we have a hardware flow charts, which shows a relationship among hardware elements of an information system. Okay, the one covered by this lecture is document flow charts. Okay, it traces how documents flow through uh, information systems. It focuses more uh, on uh, how uh, documents, okay, how documents are used and processed and sent through the system. All right, so let's briefly talk about how we create flowchart, okay, steps. Uh, we do have we do have uh, videos uh, for creating flowcharts. You're gonna check that later on. But let's talk about the steps. First, we're gonna establish the system boundaries. Okay. So how to establish the boundaries? So what to be included in the document flowchart? Some judgment and subjectivity are required. Okay. For example. What is the boundary of a flowchart for inventory purchase process? So basically, the flow document flowchart should right, cover the organization itself, set it as a priority. So our vendors included vendors part of the flowchart. It may or may not, but usually, if our focus is the organization itself, we care about how document flow within organizations then vendors will, will, will be ignored in the flowchart. But it will, it will show up in the flowchart as a, basically as a terminal, okay, as a terminal. So we're going to talk about terminal later on. 
that's the end of the that that's it. The terminal is is a boundary. It's a boundary of the system. Okay. Then we're gonna do, 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 basically determine uh, department or in flowchart the column. Okay. So what are those columns in the flowchart? So we're gonna list columns based on their focus or responsibility for example when we draw the uh, the purchase document flow chart right we're gonna set uh, those department as columns for example we have columns for requesting department, columns for purchasing department, columns for accounting department, columns for receiving department. And if we include vendors in this document flow chat, vendors could be a column. Or if we do not include vendors, vendors will be the terminal of the flow chat or the boundary of the flow chat. Okay, once we determine the column and uh, their headings, we're gonna list actions within each, within each column. Basically, we're gonna list what each department will do within the systems. For example, what are the actions taken by the purchase department? For example, they receive, right? Purchase re re requisitions. They prepare purchase order. They send the order to the vendor. They send copies of the purchase orders to other department. So these are the actions done by the purchase department. Okay. So we're going to list actions. Uh, and uh, they will show up in the document flow, flow chart. So think about it. What are the actions you will take if your mobile phone uh, does not have signal? Right? What are the possible actions you will take? Think about it. So next we're going to uh, choose appropriate symbols to show those process and uh, documents. Okay. Then we're going to prepare our draft, discuss it with others, and revise as needed. So that's, those are the steps we need. Alright, so what are those symbols we're going to use? Right, we have symbols for input-output, symbols for storage, symbols for process, Right, we have line symbols, which shows the flow of action. We have our special symbols. Okay, you cannot use whatever the symbols you want. Okay, the, we we do have a commonly accepted symbols for document flow chart. Okay, here we show some of those frequently used symbols in document flow chart. Okay, for example, right, we have a we have a symbol for document. Right or for multiple documents, right? We have symbols for uh, process, right? The rectangular is for computer processing, and then we also have for menu, menu process, right? That's a trapezoid. All right, so the terminal. Right, we mentioned terminal, which is uh, at the end of the uh, uh, the flow chat systems or the boundary of the flow chat systems. For example, we can set vendors or banks, right, as a as a terminal. All right. So, so here we have some of the introduction of the symbols. You can take a look. 
Uh, we do have a line symbols which shows the flow document, how document flowed from one uh, process to the other. Right? These lines are not labeled. Uh, not labeled. And we do have some special ones like uh, the on page connectors. Right? To keep the document flow chat concise, right? We may use these on page connectors to show the connections. Otherwise, you're going to draw uh, the lines will cross with each other. It looks very messy. But we can use on page connectors to connect those processes. And also, we do have some off page connectors. Going to show the connection between, right? If you have too many columns, we're going to use the off page connectors, basically. All right, here we do have examples of uh, uh, document flow chat. Right, we do have a. This is only for uh, for one department, for one columns. We have a heading for that columns. Okay, we have a start terminator, right, which is a boundary. Could be uh, from the uh, the other department or from outside organizations. We have some document flow to the process, right? This is a computer process, right? Then we're gonna have a make a decision. Right here, if the uh, decision is yes, okay, it moved to the on page connector. And on page connector will start right here, continue right here. So we're going to have multiple documents if the answer is yes. And these documents will be sent to another terminator, okay. But if the decision is no, we're going to go to this another process. But this is a predefined process. Okay, we're going to define this process. So organization can predefine a lot of process. It's not just like a package. For example, this could be a, a further ver verification, right? As a predefined process, or the defined process could be. Uh, receiving payment right those are predefined process and we're going to have uh, the multiple documents again and then again sent to the end terminator all right so watch these videos okay to see how we create a document flow chat in software So talking about softwares, we do have a lot of tools for uh, flow chatting. And uh, we do have a lot of online, the free tools. Like we have this uh, visual uh, paradigm and uh, also drawer.io and many others. So you can have a try of these to see which one works best for you. Uh, also, you can use Microsoft Word or Excel to draw the flow chat. Okay, that's okay. It's still durable. Uh, uh, and that's it. So, and for assignment or for tests, okay, you you will you will use those tools to draw flow chat. Okay, it's not. Uh, and handwriting is not is not accepted okay for assignment or for exams so principles these are the principles for our document flow chat For example, we have to be consistent, to be clear, and uh, readability is also important. Easy to read, right? So people understand. 
So basically, we're going to read from uh, top to bottom, left to right. Those are the uh, how we read the dot and flow chat. And uh, also titles are important. Titles are important. And for each columns, we're going to show right department names or position names or even a person's name to show their responsibility for each of those columns. And also for documents, we're going to show a clear point of origin and a clear point of termination, right? The documents, they, they often terminate in one of two ways, right? Filings, which is they are stored in uh, storage, or they're going to move across the system to another organization. We're going to use a terminal to show right, those crossing the system boundaries. All right, we have some multiple choice to test. Next, we talk about business process diagrams. Rather, B business process diagrams or BPD is a graphical description of the business process used by a company. Though the intention is, to sh is that all business users can easily understand the process for a standard notations like the business process modeling notations and it can show the organizational unit performing the activity and we also have some uh, symbols right, for business process diagrams So there are many different symbols that can be used in drawing a BPD, okay? So the textbook only focuses on a limited amount of symbols that we see here. But we can also use other different symbols, okay? Be careful. Uh, And here we have our examples of the BPD for the payroll process. Okay. So they are basically very clear uh, five activities in total. Right? One, two, three, four, five. And uh, four, and also list all the uh, participants, right, involved. So we have new employees, we have HR, payroll, account payable, Susan, and uh, Ashton. All these are the participants. Right, so it starts with the uh, the, we're going to receive employee time cards, right? They're going to payroll is going to prepare employee paychecks and payroll summaries and will be sent to Susan, okay, subject to her approval. Also, the payroll is going to uh, send right the payables to account payables department. Again, they will forward to Susan for approval. The so Susan is going to approve it and uh, disperse checks, reports to employees, banks, and government. and forward cash disbursement vouchers okay to Ashton 
the Ashton is is going to record right update the general ledgers so this activity basically is updating the company's data file right update the general ledgers so what are the other updated work we need update work from new employees right update from the HR and uh, also the update from the payroll the payroll is going to update employee the payroll files all right so this is a example for BPD for the payroll processing okay so you can go through these guidelines for uh, joining BPD okay Okay, next we talk about data flow diagrams or DFD. So DFD is a graphical uh, description of the flow of data within the organizations. So basically it's going to show the source and the destination of the data, how data are processed and how data are stored. And uh, sometimes we show also, uh, also show internal controls involved in the process. So DFDs are visually simple, yet can be used to represent the same process at a high abstract or detailed level. Okay, we're going to show a very simple one. We can show a very detailed process levels. Okay, both are achievable in DFDs. All right, some of the symbols used in DFDs. Square is used for data sources and destinations. But usually these are represent entities. Okay. They are labeled with noun phrases. Entities may not exchange information with one another. And the circle ones or the bubble ones Right, represent processes. Processes. The process denotes the action that transform data into other data. Usually, we're going to label them with verb phrases. So, how we going to do with the data? And uh, they're numbered sequentially within a single DFD. And the number is going to indicate the level of DFD. We're going to talk about it pretty soon. And the parallel lines represent the databases, okay? also known as sinks or stores. And this shows how data are stored, how data are stored. And the lines represent data flows. All right, so here we have an example of the basic DFD. Now basically, it shows how data is transformed from the source A to its destination K and J. Okay, right, data is data origin from source A right it, it is processed C and then data flow to destination J or keep will be further processed in F okay and data is stored exchanged with the data store H and uh, further flows to de data destination K. And you may see a triangle used in DFD. It represents in uh, controls, internal controls, basically. 
associated with the process. Okay, now these are not numbered yet. Okay, these processes are not numbered. We're going to talk about numbered process later. So DFD versus flowcharts. Very similar ones, but there are obvious some uh, differences. First, right, DFD has four symbols. Flowcharts right, have many. And DFD has leveled sets, can show very simple ones, and can show very detailed levels. Flowcharts has columns. DFD focuses on data and their movement, while flowcharts focuses on processes and uh, documents. And DFD, the line represents data, right? And flowcharts line represents the movement of a document. Now let's talk about leveled sets of DFDs, right? DFD can show very simple ones and can show very detailed processes. So it starts with a contest diagram. Contest diagram, which is uh, the simplest one also the highest level of DFT. It provides readers with a summary level view of the system. Then we expand into level 0, level 1, level 2. Each level is going to add more details. Add more details. Further levels are possible but not often necessary. Right here, we have the uh, highest level, the contest diagram. Right, there's only one, okay, in every level set contest diagram, and often only one process. The entire process is shown within a single uh, circle. For example, this is for the cash receipt system and then we're going to show their relationships with external entities and external database for example and there's only one external entities involved which is customer we're going to show the relationship right the cash receipt data is going to flow from customers to the system and also the system is going to send the data to the to the store, the bank account. Okay? So these are the highest level, highest level uh, view of the cash receipt systems. Very clear but it lacks much details. Then in the next level, in the next level we're going to show details. Right, this is level zero. Why it's level zero? It's because number. We have two processes. The first is 1.0, second is 2.0. Now we have two processes at this level. It's called a level zero. So it break down the cash receipt process into two processes, 1.0 and 2.0. 1.0 is open mail, and then 2.0 is prepare bank deposits. And then we show the data, right, the data flow. Okay. Next, we can add more detail for, to each of those processes. For example, in the level 1 diagrams, expand the 2.0 process, prepare bank deposits. We're going to break that 
2.0 into another two processes called 2.1, 2.2. We call this level one diagram. Okay, we can it can have more, but that's not necessary. So we have two. 2.1 is endorse checks, and 2.2 is about uh, preparing deposit slips. Okay. So for the same reason, we can we can also expand uh, the 1.0 level into 1.1, 1.2, or even more. Again, this is level one, and usually people will add another one. Level two, right? Uh, but uh, may it may not be necessary. May not be necessary. All right. So that's about level sets of DFD. Rules for preparing level sets of DFDs. And here we have a, a video examples how to create a, a leveled DFD, uh, the context level, context level. Okay, we do have a, a weekly discussion which requires you to draw. Uh, contest level DFDs okay you're gonna post a, a picture file or upload a file into the weekly discussion thread and here are some of the basic guidelines for creating DFDs okay so you're gonna take a look 